listening to What the Truck. Let it snow, Michael Vincent. Welcome to a very What the Truck Christmas. I'm Junior Claus, and that right there... It's Buddy the Dude. <laughs> Buddy the Dude, man. I love this time of year, and I really appreciate the fact that you set up that snow machine so it's not pointed directly at my face. Oh, like, a like Halloween the fog episode. machine. <laughs> so I really love that. I love this time of year, man. Peace and I love to the whole supply chain. I can't wait to clean up all this uh, snow off the carpet after the show, too. It's a uh, nice free uh, <laughs> steam over here bite. for freightways. Um, <laughs> but what a year it's been, and what a, what a time to, to recollect and be this final show yeah. of the year on a Wealth of Truck. I have a great celebration with everyone here. I mean, you guys have been paying attention on social media. You know we did the Freight Holiday Tree. We'll take a look at that in just a minute over here. But uh, it's been a wonderful time, and it's great to see community coming together because it's been a challenging year. I mean, it really has. this is one that we thought we would be in the clear in the second half of the year, and it just turned out the virus just wouldn't go away. Ever given happened, poor congestion that only got worse, KPI gaming, uh, all salsa, no chips, and all the cars. <laughs> it's been tough, but there's also been the mainstreamification of freight news as well. Which is, uh, you know, freight news and getting a freight and logistics in the forefront is awesome, man. And it'd be really nice to maybe next year we have a year where we go, you know what, that was a good one. Let's do that one again. Hey, we're going <laughs> to have, have a lot of songs and cheer on this show. My kids were so excited they threw this one together. Let's take a look. Ooh, let's do it. Wow, they really did Luke Skywalker like that. <laughs> wow, is that from the movie? Did you steal that from the movie? From the movie? No, they made that up. My, that my, uh, actual clip? <laughs> my seven-year-old made that one up on his own. That's awesome. You know, a little dark saber there. Very you know, cool. it's been a productive year. We've done a lot of shows. Let's take a look at this. We've done 7,590 minutes of content on One the Truck Whoa. across 138 episodes. Nice. We've spoken to 527 guests. That's probably got to be a record. That's a lot of guests. Yeah, we've asked hundreds of stupid questions. At least, at least that, that, that we know of. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the biggest one. This one's even more important because, you know, Weather Truck's just one podcast here. But we have a bunch of podcasts. And if you want to listen to them all on one convenient feed, we have one called Freightcast. And That's I'm right. proud to announce that we hit over a million downloads last night. Over a million unique downloads on our Freightcast Ooh. feed. All because of you because you're the ones pressing play and listening. We love you all. Thank you peace so, love so much. To all uh, of you, peace Big final love. show of the year. We have FreightWave CEO and founder Craig Fuller. He's going to help us recap what's been going on inside and outside the house. Project nice. 44 CEO and founder, the wonderful Jet McCandless. Get Don Queenie, director of Sweet. transportation at REITs Across America. Campbell University, Sal Mercogliano. And Jackson Stanley. He's a logistics advisor over at Bridge Logistics. Um, we also did our big thank you. So let's show the Christmas tree right oh, now. We asked is. for all these ornaments. We got so many from across the whole spectrum Look of the those. supply chain. We got a beautiful cup of cheer. I would have put that hot chocolate kit, kit from Candor on there, but it wouldn't fit. But no, we also it wouldn't got fit, but that thing was beautiful. Roanoke on there, Surge, Hut Seat Services. Um, AIT sent us this wonderful stocking. CFI, Quick Loads, uh, Maven Machines. Uh, what is it? CFI, Figure 3 could Cover There's three Kingsgate. Consulting. Is that a Kingsgate hat right there? Uh, Chop Tank was another one. BWS sent us a really awesome ornament. Uh, Alcoa sent us those really cool wheels. Uh, Logison Advisor sent us um, uh, these really nice uh, coasters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Logison did. It. Yeah, yeah. Reliance is up there. TMI. Yeah, Convoy sent stuff. us a beautiful kit. There Convoy was a cut us ton a lot of stuff. Of yeah. Great stuff. Now, before we get to our first guest, we do have a couple of songs because we asked the freight community too. Do you want to sing for us? You want to spread a little cheer around the world? Let's play a few of those. Well, the global supply chain is frightful, but logistics is simply delightful. And we love this industry so, and love the boat in the road, let it snow. Ice. <laughs> Not bad. Ice. From all of us at IMI, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Well, Merry Christmas and hey, Happy New Year Merry to Christmas. IMI Logistics Advisors as well. Now let's tip the band before we get into things. Owner-operators want to be on the road with loaded miles, not doing admin work or on their phone chasing freight. Convoy's got your back with a simple-to-use app. Sign up in minutes and get access to freight from the nation's best shippers, including power-only loads. And you know what else? It's all free. Oh, that's sweet. So visit convoy.com forward slash WTT or download the Convoy app on Google Play or the App Store to get started. Bring Jackson Stanley on. He's a logistics advisor over at Bridge Logistics. You may have heard about those tornadoes. They did a oh, ton of damage throughout the area. Um, but Bridge Logistics people. was there to help out and spread some relief. Jackson, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved with this, uh, with the relief that you were giving out. Yeah, um, so come Monday morning, um, that's when I first got in touch with my customer down that way in Hickory, Kentucky. 
um, their Applegate insulation. And, you know, she was telling me a lot about what happened down there and that, you know, there's a lot of, you know, unfortunate stories and so forth. Um, and then kind of came to mind that maybe, you know, we could get together a rally and donate a bunch of supplies down there, um, which, you know, she was able to provide like a, a church and um, in place that we could take them. So then that's kind of when it all started. And um, we rallied in about 24 hours, two days, and we ended up um, filling about 22 feet of a 26 foot box truck. Um, you know, executive choice took the whole um, whole load down there and they did it on the house and everything was just wonderful. Like they really put together a, a great team um, to bring it down there. And the driver was very excited to help out. And it was just really a great thing that we were able to come up with that much stuff. I mean, tell you what, Costco probably hated us because we, we took at least six truckloads, um, just like pickup trucks from there and back to our office all day on um, Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, it's really it's really nice to see our community, our, our freight community and logistics community reach out with all the with all the the, the yeah. jobs postings and trying to get people hired from the CFL thing. And now it reaching out to the, the people in Mayfield and God bless those people right there. You seeing other people reach out as well where you guys were down there? Yeah. And um, I'll tell you what, when we were down there waiting for um, our truck to arrive, there was, I mean, countless trucks just um, waiting there to be unloaded. So we, we kind of helped out with that. And then um it was just really great to see everybody pitching in. I mean, everybody was in really great spirits too. Um, despite what happened, you know, they just wanted to get back on their feet, see what they could do to help. I mean, there was construction companies there pitching in all their time to volunteer. And, you know, it seemed like anybody with a truck and trailer was willing to um, take goods to that place. Did you get to meet any of the impacted and, and how were they feeling at this time? I mean, it's, it's such a devastating time to lose mm -hmm. homes, all these different in injuries, devastation. Some people sure. died. Um, were you able to meet any of those folks? Yeah. So, um, like I said, my customer Applegate, um, she actually came down and helped out and, um, her name's Kim and she was just great. Um, a lot of her workers were affected by it. Um, almost all of them did lose their homes. So she was um, helping them out. And, you know, we got to speak to some of the volunteers there that, I mean, the same happened to them. Um, they were in good spirits and, you know, they just wanted to help out wherever they could to try and, you know, rebuild and rebuild back, you know, better. Um, it was really like touching to see how they were, you know, taking the whole scenario and they were looking at it in a positive light. Like, it's a very like small town feel and they were incredibly uh, you know, grateful for what was going on. And, you know, I didn't really like, I'm, I'm sure there was sadness, you know, within all that, but they seemed to really take that, you know, with a grain of salt and just push forward. It, it was just amazing. Yeah. You know, I saw a post yesterday where someone was trying to uh, rent out their house. Right. And they put it out there saying, hey, it's empty. Anybody mm -hmm. know anybody who wants to rent it? Somebody replied, hey, why don't you offer it up to the people of Mayfield and see if somebody can stay in that thing? Yeah. We're bringing all these supplies and stuff that down. Where are these people staying? Do you know, do you know, is there people reaching out for that? Yeah. So um, I kind of got the gist of um, a lot of the people where they could. There is I think a hotel maybe called the Winfield. Mm -hmm. um, don't quote me on that, but they offered up all their rooms to stay um, for people that lost their homes. They were, I think, giving out food there. So um, they almost turned their whole operation into a shelter to be able to house that. Um, other than that, their high school there was relatively um, up and running. So they had showers there for the folks. And um, uh, I believe, you know, you could stick around that area as shelter as well. Um, so there was definitely companies pitching in, you know, wherever they could to be able to provide shelter for those um, that were um, unfortunate of losing their homes. Wow, it's tough to hear. Um, but but I love the work that Bridge is doing. And because you did all this great work, why don't you put a plug out there? How do people get in touch with Bridge if they want to work with you guys in the new year? Yeah, um, so you can definitely um, reach out to myself um, or um, my coworker, Corey Armstrong. We're, um, we're kind of putting this whole thing together. Um, I mean, I'll, uh, I can shoot my email to anybody that would want to help out. It's um, J Stanley, S T A N L E Y, at Bridge Logistics, INC.com. And um, we're working on um, a fund that we can funnel the rest of the money into since we put um, most of the money to supplies. Um, I'm trying to figure out the best one to get to um, working with my customer because obviously, if we can uh, you know, directly impact them the best, that's the way we want to do it. Um, but feel free to send me an email. Um, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, so forth. There's a few posts about that. So any way to reach out, um, even call our direct phone line um, and uh, we can put you in touch with somebody that can help or funnel those donations for you. 
Thank you so stuff. thank you so much, Jackson. Take care. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you and the team over at Bridge. Right on. Peace and love. Likewise. Hey, say hi to Chris for me, by the way. Take it easy. Hey, they weren't the only ones who were doing good out there. We love highlighting stuff like this. The Harbor Trucking Association, they did a big delivery for Toys for Tots. Take a look at this. Oh, Matt Strapp over there and Carla Sanchez Jimenez. They dropped off all of those toys, generously donated for Toys for Tots from the Harbor Trucking Association. Over 100 toys they rounded up and and gave out over here. What do you think of that? I think that's awesome. I mean, when we think about all the staples that you need, they need the shelter and they need the food and stuff like that. But it's Christmas time, man. These kids get some gifts from Santa as well. That's that's really that's really awesome. Sure really is. Well, awesome. hey, we've got a, a little bit more holiday cheer with you. Let's let's play a few more videos here. Thanks for the ride today, Ricky. See you later. No problem, Santa. Have a great day. What's up, Santa? IMC, Chris Kringle. Okay, we've got you covered. Ho, ho, ho. You have a Merry Christmas. How's your day, Santa? Ricky, it was great. We got everything delivered in time for Christmas. All in a day's work. Merry Christmas from Candor Expedite. Yay! Yay! Beautiful. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Candor and IMC. We really enjoyed those those two from you. Hey, so I don't know if you heard this, but no, December 18th has now been called National Wreaths Across America Day. Oh, good. Let's take a look at this. Remember. Honor. Teach. Join us on Saturday, December 18th for National Wreaths Across America Day. To find the location in your community, visit wreathsacrossamerica.org. Ooh, well, hey, we have Jose Socorro with us today. He's uh, representing Reeds Across America. He's going to talk about a little bit about the work he's done with them. Jose, thanks for joining us. Hey, Tim. Hey, dude. Good to be here. Happy Friday. <laughs> Merry Christmas, my man. Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for jumping on and filling in. I know that the Reeds Across America team has been incredibly busy because they yeah. have this national day that was just announced recently, I think, November 8th, uh, December 18th, being Reeds Across America. They tell us a little bit about the work that they do and the work that you're doing with them. Absolutely. So uh, I, with the, on the logistics side, they actually start out pretty early, about a few weeks, like late November, early December, organize all the trucks that are participating, like the Walmarts, the Tysons and the JB Hunts, and then they send out. So what I've learned, because Central State's looking into next year, picking up the recent delivering, is they have certain parts of the country where they uh, have the wreaths uh, dropped off and then other trucking companies pick them up and deliver them to the cemeteries tomorrow. And so it is a pretty big operation. They're a good team. And I look forward to what 22 will bring for central states and reach across America on the logistics side. Yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. So what does it mean to you guys? Why did you guys get involved with this? One of the biggest things is saying thank you to our veterans and appreciating their work. When I started at central states, I did a ride along with a veteran and got me thinking there's got to be something we can do to say thank you and to start the initiative to recognize and celebrate not only veterans outside of central states but also within and our ceo jim slyker he's a big giving back champion i mean he's dressed up as spider-man before for uh, doing children's outreach like make a wish foundation and all and and zelda and the guy is just a role model and a leader and and we all follow his lead and we just try to emulate what he what he demonstrates and so that's why we did it. it was for veterans and this is the first year we're doing something for veterans at Central State. So we're pretty excited. And even the drivers, I've talked to many drivers out of our Arkansas plant that are just excited and have expressed joy. And, and a lot of them are actually going to be joining myself and others uh, laying wreaths uh, tomorrow, very, very early in the morning. Wow. Well, hey, a little Christmas bell for you for doing that. You know what? I'm even going to give you a little snow for that. Let's give him some snow. Oh, yeah. Bring in a squall. There you go. Let's a little, little blizzard in here. We'll bring the Yay. chair. Say it's raining now. Yeah. We wish we could have some go through your screen as well. Hey, one other thing before we let you go is uh, Central Freight Lines, <laughs> it shut down over the weekend, went bankrupt. And I know that you were one of the people who responded to my post who were doing reach out to see if any of the drivers, ops people, et cetera, needed positions so we can all give them soft landings. What's going on at Central State for CFL, uh, former CFL employees? Well, we have two Texas plants in Seguin and Cedar Hill, Texas, and I've reached out to one of their uh, VPs, and they had passed on my information. Hadn't heard anything yet. 
but I may just step it up and, and just reach out today or or next week sometime to see what we can do because we do have locations in Texas and a lot of times in central states, you know, we're always hiring drivers. And so some of our drivers have drive van reefer experience, but we can translate that into flatbed experience with the way we, we do our training program, especially if you've been driving for a while. There's a lot of similarities, especially with using uh, ELD, Omni tracks, hours of service. So the, some of those skills are transferable, makes the training process a little easier. But we've also done a thing where we do apprenticeships. So if you're interested in driving, and you're willing to go through driving school and you pass and you do well, we'll also look at that as well. That's something we've done this year. I actually have one driver in my plan out of Missouri that was actually an apprentice. And now he's driving with us and doing a great job being safe and servicing the customers. Well, Jose, hey, we really appreciate it. The Amen. beard is looking wonderful. My friend is growing <laughs> in really good. I can't Thank wait you. to see the length yes, you get on there uh, over the holidays. Hey, how do people reach out to you guys And um, uh, before we let you go? Absolutely. Reach across America, uh, dot org to sponsor a reef, to get involved next year, to reach out to central states, centralstates.com, or you can Google us and we're always hiring and looking to bring in the best of the best. Thank you guys. And Merry Christmas. You too, Jose. Take Merry care, Christmas, Jose. Excellent stuff. All right. Before we get to Jet McCandless, we have a little bit more from the world of freight wishing cheer. And I believe some of them are internal. We've also got a song from the wonderful Tom Curry. So let's go at it. Oh, wait, no. Hey everyone. Tony Mulvey here. Uh, co-host of Great Quarter Dies with Anthony Smith. Uh, just want to wish everybody a happy and safe holiday, uh, and we will see everybody again in 2022. That's right, happy holidays, and I can't wait to see what's in the works for Great Quarter Guys in 2022. Wonder what changes we're gonna have. We'll see you then. Hey everybody, it's Steve Ferreira, host of Navigate B2B, wishing you and your families a very happy holiday season. I'm here to help you avoid container getting, so tune in to Navigate B2B every Friday. In the meantime, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, enjoy the season. Happy holidays from all of us here at Freight Waves. We want to say thank you to you for inviting us into your homes this past year. You have made our success infinitely great this year. Hopefully you get everything you want and more at your doorstep this holiday season. Have a safe and happy holiday, and we'll see you in the new year. Brian. Yeah. I have an idea for Christmas. Okay. I wrote a song. Talk. Just, just hear the song. D d just listen to the song. Where did you get a guitar? <laughs> listen to the song. Okay. We wish you would chip with us, we wish you would chip with us, we wish you would chip with us into the new year. We wish you would chip with us, we wish you would chip with us, we wish you would chip with us into the new year. These shipments we bring to you and your kin. These shipments for Christmas and a happy new year. My freight stuck at the port now. My freight stuck at the port now. My freight stuck at the port now. So bring it right here. We won't go until it's covered. We won't go until it's covered. We won't go until it's covered. We'll all stay right here. These shipments we bring to you and your kin. These shipments for Christmas and a happy new year. We wish you would ship with us. We wish you would ship with us. We wish you would ship with us into the new year. We wish you would ship with us. We wish you would ship with us. We wish you would ship with us into the new You know, I would have liked the scene where he, like, opens... Sending up. that to anyone. And it's already got out to the whole freight world. <laughs> Sorry, it's out there. I would have liked if there was a scene where he uh, opens the bathroom up, right? And there's just Tom with the guitar. Just like Tom everywhere. You open a cupboard, there's the Tom Curry in there. Yeah, there's yeah, Tom yeah, yeah. everywhere. I like yeah. where they were... They started to go that way with the uh, with the elevator, but it didn't... It didn't. I, I bet we go to Jet McCandless right now, it's actually going to be Tom Curry sitting there with the guitar. <laughs> it's, it's Jet McCandless, founder and CEO of Project 44. Jet, thanks for making some time for us on our holiday special today. Oh, we uh -oh. got him on mute. We got you on mute. Can we unmute you? Uh oh, oh let's Did check. Did you mute yourself? Got it unmuted, Jet? 
Okay, let's oh. just dub him in. Hi, I'm Jet McCandless. Dub him in. I'm wishing you a happy <laughs> new... Ventriloquist style. Um, <laughs> well, guys, can you get with Jet? Uh, production team will get with Jet. They'll get his sound up, and right we will jump over to him. In the meantime, let's play a little more cheer videos. We got another oh, internal cheer video. another video, video? yeah. Oh. Thank you. Wow, excellent. Do you know who that was from, too? That was from that was from uh, Sean Lydon. He's the CEO over at the Chief Executive Officer over at Lydon Communications, LLC. That was, um, that was very well done. A little smooth jazz over there. <laughs> All right, let's bring, yeah, it out. Let's bring Jet back Sweet. up. I think he's off mute. Jet McCandless, founder and CEO over at Project 44. Jet, thanks for ringing in the year with us. Matt, thanks, thanks for having me. Definitely a lot of, that was a good lineup of some uh, music there. The, the jingle uh, with the guitar and then the alto saxophone. That was impressive. Yeah, so what goes down for the holidays over at Project 44 these days? Well, you know, we, uh, we have holiday parties uh, across the world. And in Europe, a lot of them got postponed or canceled or um, reduced to, you know, more uh, humble dinners. And in Chicago, uh, the team kind of let it rip. We did rapid testing the day of the holiday party and got about 500 people in a room. And uh, so far, success. Uh, so pretty, pretty interesting. And then, of course, we we're obviously focused on uh, closing out the year, servicing the customers, making sure that they're set up and that we've got um, everything teed up and going into 2022 really strong. So, Jed, it's been a, it's been a, a bit of a difficult year. Uh, hopefully you guys get to celebrate this uh, this fine season and, and have some good cheer. But uh, what do you what do you uh, wh what are you thankful for from this year? There's got to be a lot of good stuff that came through. I know there has at Project 44, but what is in your mind when you sit down and think back through the year? so much to be thankful for. Uh, the list gets pretty long quickly, especially if you start mashing up, you know, personal and uh, just all the amazing team members get to get to work with. Uh, Project 44 is, if I kind of think about it, it as a busy year, like you mentioned. We acquired Clear Metal, Convey, Ocean Insights. Uh, we were named the Mag uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant Leader, uh, Customer Choice in Gartner. Uh, we've raised hundreds of millions of dollars this year. One of my favorites, we were number one on Freight Tech. Uh, we also did a really amazing program this year I've been working on for years, which is Women Development Program, where uh, 20 women, uh, we did a paid coaching session for them or, uh, for the entire year. So that was a big accomplishment to advance uh, women in the executive roles because uh, there aren't many in freight and logistics. There aren't enough. And then, uh, you know, we exceeded our, our revenue goals. We grew over 100%. We added so many amazing brands. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's all a lot to be thankful for. Have my health. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that's, that, that's pretty good. And just get to work with amazing folks like, like you all. Yeah, well, I mean, and I was going to say, one of my highlights was that episode of Freight Waves Insiders we did a couple months ago yeah. where I really got to hear the, you know, you really laid out and opened up about your own journey in the Project 44 story. Folks, you can find that on podcast players anywhere. Just look up Freight Waves Insiders. Uh, it was a couple of episodes ago, but it was, a, it was a great time. And, you know, it's been a tough year in terms of, for some people in supply chain, but, you know, Freight Tech has been, has been massive. The growth in Freight Tech, the investments pouring in and the need for it has never been more prescient. Can you talk a little bit about that, the growth of uh, customers and how that that's moved throughout the year? Yeah, for us, it's been uh, a huge year of growth. So uh, we started the year, depending on how you count the numbers, uh, contractors or uh, direct employees, and it gets a little weird in <clears throat> other regions of the world where um, you go through third parties where you don't have entities set up in, the, in, in that specific country yet. 
uh, right about 250 folks. And so to exit the, exit the year at about 1,000 uh, team members is pretty significant growth. Uh, we also came in the year uh, at about 30, uh, two, 33 million of subscription revenue and we're exited 96 million subscription revenue. So that was really significant. Um, and then, uh, you know, we built some other, just, we built out a lot of programs. Uh, uh, so we added a lot of customers, uh, went from about 250 customers to probably close to a thousand right now. I'd say probably like 960, 970 as we sit here today and it's the end of the quarter. So more come. Then we built out a lot of great uh, programs also like Romeo, which uh, was a cool program to give uh, all the team members a sprinter van, um, let them work out in the wild. So lo lots of growth in both employee development, uh, re customers, and, and revenue. Now, Jed, everyone's wondering what 2022 is going to look look like. And, you know, it's, it's hard to tell, but you are a great visibility platform. What are you seeing on the horizon and what are your thoughts about next year? Well, I think there just continue to be additional investment. What we see is more and more uh, of our customers uh, spending, investing more. They're getting more uh, more budget because we're providing an ROI and value to them. Um, and what you know, we noticed at the beginning of the year was this acceleration of how can they get visibility in every geography and how can they get visibility in every mode of transportation. And uh, that will continue in 2022. I think what will happen is Customers will continue also uh, where it started out with, you know, track a truck for a buck or a container for a couple of euros. Now customers want that visibility into the inventory. And so that that trend will continue. In addition to that, for us, uh, we continue to go upstream and downstream of visibility to uh, digitalize that experience. So um, and I think, you know, just digitalization is going to continue. So many great startups out there. So much innovation that's happening. To your point, tons of capital coming in the space. Um, so we're expecting some pretty high growth years. Uh, 2022 organically, we expect to exceed 165 million of subscription revenue, uh, which will be really healthy growth. That is, uh, Jet, that is excellent, man. Um, Merry Christmas to you and the team at Project 44. It, I, thank you for taking a little time with us today to ring in the holidays. I know you guys do amazing work over there. And um, it's been a great year. It's been a great year. It's been a tough year in some ways, but it's been a great year in many others. And it looks like 22 um, could be maybe more of the same. I don't know. <laughs> ah, man, I really hope we look back Hopefully on 22 and go, let's do that one again. That was a great year. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Thanks, Jed. Peace Jed, and love, thank you friend. so much. Merry Christmas Appreciate to you, family. Happy holidays. Take it easy. All right, now we got to uh, we got to tip the band before we bring yep. Craig Fuller on. So everybody loves getting paid fast and in full at uh, Convoy's free quick pay helps carriers do just that. Skip the factoring costs and get paid in two business days on all loads booked through the Convoy app. To learn more, tell them, dude. Hey, keep more money in your pocket with Convoy quick pay. Visit convoy.com forward slash WTT or download the Convoy app on Google Play or the App Store to get started. With over 400 locations nationwide, Love's Truck Care and Speedco Network are committed to providing a tire program to meet your needs. The Love's Retread Warranty Program combines quantity and safety and is designed with your your fleet's efficiency in mind. They cover the retread and casing for the full life of that very retread. That's right. You can learn more at loves.com. Go there immediately after this show. All right. Let's bring the man on. Let's, uh, he's coming in it. from the storm. He's coming in from the blizzard. Ooh, we'll get a little snow he's going. A little it snow is squall with him. Great wave CEO and founder, Craig Fuller. Also Flying Magazine CEO, too. That's right. <laughs> it's my new uh, side hustle. I like the sweater, too. You know, this is a, a Canadian Royal Air Force uh, uniform. I so. like that it's, it's, got it's got the like, It's got the maple leaf. It's Canadian. It's, uh, it's sort got, of like, festive. It's got a flare here. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't know this, but the Canadian Air Force helps escort Santa. So they protect Santa. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, oh, over Christmas Eve and ensure that he's safe during the whole thing. They have the honorary guard. So in honor of Christmas, I'm wearing the Canadian Air Force outfit. You even matched the, did you get a stylist? You've even matched the no, watch. You've wife. even matched the watch. To my the wife, it is, it is very festive. My wife is uh, my stylist. <laughs> style, uh, which I don't, I was not gifted. But. Well, Craig, one of the best things about these holiday shows is a great time to sort of look back and reflect and also look ahead. When you look at, let's start with Freight Waves. When you look at the year that Freight, that was with freight waves when we're we even thought we would be back in person but we had to stay virtual it was a it was challenging but also a good year like a lot of people have experienced talk a little bit about that well i, I mean you think about this year we came in this year as you mentioned the fact that we thought we were coming back thought we were going to be here and mid-year we realized it's actually looks like it's getting worse and i think we thought 
You know, F3, the future of freight festival, was scheduled here in November. It was going to be the biggest live event we've had mm -hmm. in our entire history. Uh, we had f six musical acts lined up, big uh, name brand acts that people would know. And uh, in late August, right before Labor Day, we had to cancel it. And it was it was very disappointing, but we just looked at the Delta variant here locally, and all the hospitals were completely tapped out. It looked like it was getting much, much worse. Now, what's interesting about that is come November, I remember – the week it was supposed to take place, thinking, man, it is beautiful, <laughs> yeah. and it is regretful because, you know, that wave hit, and then it sort of washed away. Yeah. So and Now here's Omicron, too, so who knows what's going to happen. I know. I, I, I've got a, a friend of mine that's in New York City, and he told me, hey, be careful when you come up there because my wife's from that area, uh, that he estimates about a third of the city has uh, wow. Omicron. Now, he's young. Yeah. He says 70% of his friends have it. So Wow. Um, yeah, I saw we got our first one that's the other day. Our first here in Well, in apparently it ain't going to take long. No, it's going to blow through. It's us more like viral crazy. than P44. <laughs> so this is uh this is uh that's this thing is uh, this thing is mean. Yeah, it is. Mean. Yeah, it is. It's, it's been aggressive. amazing to see um to see Jets growth. And you know, one of the things that every industry has had to face a challenge of and even Freightways has is is the great resignation, right? That's been one of the the biggest challenges, but I think uh, a, a testament to your leadership in the team is at the start of the pandemic a year ago, right? We had to, we had to lose some people. Everybody lost some people, but if if you look in our Slack now, I think we're up to like 190, 200. We got more people than we've ever had in this building before. Yeah, it's well, they're not in the building. That well, is, yeah, that, in, <laughs> that's true. In the a part building. of a part of Freightways, you're right. I mean, it's been a it's been a big growth year. I, I think it, the last two years have been a defining moment for this industry. Yeah. Uh, and you know, it's interesting because three years ago, when people when I would say, "Hey, I've got this media business that covers supply chain and freight, uh, it does data," people look at me like. Can you really build a business out of that? That sounds like really boring. There were like, a couple doubters, weren't like, there? Like oh, a couple. Like, <laughs> a do you know that I did right? over a hundred venture capital <laughs> yeah. pitches yeah. and did not find a single one that would say yes? So until we did. And yeah. you remember yeah. those days. Oh, I do. I remember, I remember those when you days. had your resume ready to go because the company was gonna brother. shut down, we're out of cash. Like, oh, so we're out of <laughs> But like it, it's it has been completely different yeah. in the last and it's Absolutely. not just about us, it's the entire industry's rally yeah. around it. Supply chain is super, super sexy. Uh, and you know, it's interesting in media you sort of cheer. It's a little different because founders tend to be competitive. But I find myself cheering for all of these great startups, both young and uh, older and or established, uh, because we're, they're doing so many interesting things. Absolutely. We're in a renaissance, man. Oh, yeah. No, there's a huge renaissance in the freight industry, and hopefully, and it will continue. I mean, it is now sexy. I mean, it's a, it's a conversation. <laughs> it has always been sexy. It, it, I, I think so, too. But for to the For 34 the years, it was sexy, and nobody understood yeah. why it is one of these things that we used to joke about, like, you get it on you, and you just can't wash it off. Yeah. No, it's, that's it, right. It, is. it gets in your blood, and you can't get it out, and now it is it is a necessity that companies make those investments. And yeah, absolutely. It's all over the news. Yeah. Uh, you know, the whether it's the White House talking about, they talked about something yesterday with the Tucking Task Force, yeah. to supply chain hitting all the media outlets. Uh, it's been a remarkable year. I know it's, it's hard to sort of say that because most people, in our personal lives, it hasn't felt that way. Yeah. No. But in business, man, if you're in supply chain, you're in the right sector. Well, people ask me what do I do, and I explain to them, and they and they sit and listen now. Yeah, they care. Like, <laughs> they used wait, to go wait, wait, trucks. Wait, trucks. You can write about freight. Hey, you don't smell like diesel. <laughs> well, I, you, know, <laughs> you, you do, Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the growth, even the growth of like podcasts, for example, we hit a million uh, unique downloads, over a million unique downloads on our Freightcast feed, and that seemed unthinkable. Just like the idea of Freightways, a big media site, seemed unthinkable a few years ago. So did this, because I was trying to pitch this podcast to other people and company. They're like, well, yeah, like you'll get like fifteen downloads, and I think that. What really worked this year, how we saw so much acceleration, is a lot of the freedom you give to us content creators, too. Mm. So we're, we can engage mm -hmm. at all different levels. There's writers here who talk to the higher level. There's ones that talk to the middle. And there's one who acts as gateway drugs to bring in all these new listeners and new eardrums. Are you the gateway drugs? I like to be the gateway <laughs> drugs. I would like to I, be let the gateway Let me say something, Dooner, He's a bit about you <laughs> specifically. Is, you know, it's funny because your style is unconventional. Most people... When they, I remember when you and I first met, and you did the podcast. It was great. When you came here with a cowbell, it's a little eccentric, right? A little unusual, and it. But it was progressive. And I think the most important thing, and I tell people this often, is 
The secret to Dooner, the podcast, the whole TV, is we're not talking over people. We're talking with them. We're in the conversation. And we don't take ourselves so serious. You yeah. certainly don't take yourself serious. <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> so look at you guys. You look like lunatics. Well, I'm wearing a Canadian Air okay. Force outfit. Se- we take this very seriously behind the scenes. You do. Like, you do. Of, I'm not yeah, no, knocking there's, it. There's but a I mean, lot of work that goes but, into it. But yeah. this is also like when things happen, like a boat shuts down a canal. That's pretty funny. A lot sure. of memes on that. Hey, it's unfortunate. Hey, getting it's Suez is now a thing. Yeah, right? Like, <laughs> right. like don't take it so serious. You gotta, but there's you gotta this massive, and we've watched some of the, the legacy players that, you know, in a lot of ways, we, we're just looking at what they're doing to not do it, right? We're like, oh, okay, they're going that direction. Let's go, let's go our own direction, right? Let's well, capture we don't have, but it. But th- th- that used to be true, right? Yeah. Like, we used to care. I don't even care anymore. Yeah, I know. Because, like, they're not matter. the same market. It's We're in a completely different, we've elevated the game, we operate completely different, and... Now it's all about improving our own game and getting better at what we do. 2022 is coming up. What do you think next year is going to look like? For, for in terms of supply chain or just in terms of life? Let's start with Freightways. How do you think Freightways is going to be? I think Freightways is great. We're, we're making a, you know, additional investments in TV. We've got Sonar has been had a remarkable year. Uh, our new track product has gone oh, exceptionally well. That is absolutely awesome. Uh, it, and so we have some new stuff on the software side of the table. And then as it relates to media, is we've got a big investment in the studio here, yeah. uh, which we're, we have big plans uh, there, expanding the number of shows and content, and really doubling down on making things just additionally. I, I was going to say make it great, but then yeah. I feel like Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> make it but great. like really, really enhance it. So yeah. 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 we just hired a new executive producer from ESPN and right. trying to follow that model of Sports Center. One of the things that we want to do a really good job of is building a show that everybody in the industry has to tune in for. Yeah. And that's what the truck is a part of that, and we can continue to build upon it. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I, there's yeah. a lot of gravity. There's a lot of shows with a lot of pull, and we just got to put things up in orbit with them as it's well. It's all energy, man. Yeah. You guys are bringing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I asked him if we could go back to the old ESPN and get some, like, sky blue blazers to wear. And he said, <laughs> he said no. Did they get rid of all that? Uh, yeah, they used to have – remember they used to have the gold – Blazers and stuff? I don't remember. So. <laughs> they did. What about the industry? 2022? I mean, this is it's a hard one to answer because there's so many factors at play, but it, as long as demand keeps coming, freight's, freight's going to keep coming. Yeah. Freight's always going to come. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the reality is that freight is a part of it. Does the market slow down? It will feel that way to people in the trucking industry because mm-hmm. there's a lot of new mm-hmm. capacity coming in. That's the unfortunate reality is. And it's not – people are talking about driver shortages or lack of drivers. Yeah. It's coming from owner-operator capacity. Is people are like, look, I don't want to work for this trucking company. I want to go start my own business. And there's never been a better environment. And it's never been easier to do that. So yeah, I was going to say it's Convoy uh, you know, sponsors this show. Uh, they're one of many examples of, of how a driver can go out and start their own company and yeah. not be have to work for someone else. And I think that's going to be a big story of next year is the, mar- the reality is the owner-operator capacity is coming back. It's going to create pressure on a lot of fleets because they're not going to get the aggressive price increases that they're hoping for. That's unfortunate. Ocean, I think, we got, I think the ocean <laughs> apocalypse is going to mm. continue if you're a shipper. Uh, for another at least year, if not two, uh, apocalypse if you're a shipper. But man, if you own a ship company, yeah, if you're like one of the eleven. Four years ago, you wouldn't <laughs> want to do that. But if you're one I, of the eleven, you're doing well. If you're one of the three alliances, you're doing. I heard actually coming into Chinese New Year because it's early this year. It's February first. Rates are actually going to be up. Spot rates are going to be up twenty percent, moving into that capacity. It's really tight, and I know European shipping has been really tough as well with a ton mm-hmm. of um, of blank sailings. So my last question for you, though, is the, the task force. The White House has taken an interest in this. We've long been ignored, and now it's front-page news when they talk about it. And initially, we were very critical because they were just repeating things that, like, the port was saying or the associations were saying. And lately, it seems like they're actually reading freight waves, and they're, and they're hearing a lot of counterpoints. Like, one of the ones they put out about trucking yesterday actually challenged the ATA's notion that we're 80,000 drivers short. And it was like, mm-hmm. well, actually, look at this massive inefficiency. And you know what? We're actually going to study all of this. I thought that I thought that was good. I like that they're listening. I think they have to. I mean, look, take politics aside. The government has an enormous role in uh, creating a safe freight market, but they also have enormous role in ensuring that we have people that are qualified to drive trucks and that there is a proper labor supply and. I think now the administration, now the federal government is realizing that they need to take a proactive stance and chat, like challenge some of the 
some of the, the talking points about driver shortage and say what is actually happening here on the ground. Because it isn't as simple to say there's a driver shortage. Yeah. Because why would you have an oversupply capacity like you had in 19 if there was yeah. a driver shortage? Because right. you listen to the ATA, they talked about driver shortage, but then you had trucks sitting against a fence. Well, yeah. there was no driver shortage across the industry. There was a capacity glut caused by too many drivers driving trucks. Yeah. Now, you as a trucking company may have had a driver shortage because you didn't have drivers to fill those seats. It's a different problem than a single carrier having a problem. And I think getting those answers mm -hmm. is really important. Putting some energy and resources into it and some, uh, some money, I think, will be a, a positive mood. Uh, move and I think there's a lot of opportunity here. I mean, that's the great thing. Yeah. The bottom line in all this is people are talking about it. People are wanting to learn about it. People yeah. are interested in it. Absolutely. And people are joining pr supply chain programs. If anything happens good from 2021, the supply chain crisis is that this is going to be the hottest sector of the 2020s, yes, and we are in the very early innings of that, and it doesn't matter whether you're at the earliest startup or the most legacy company in the industry, you are benefiting directly from everything that's going on, and I, I'm pumped. Yeah. I, I, it's just an amazing time. And, and you know, the, the best thing about it, too, is that it brings in a new generation, it brings in new eyeballs, it brings new problem solvers, it brings people from the world of tech, the world of finance, the world of art, the world right. of, and they all come together with, with, new, with a new look at this. And it's cool that, you know, again, politics aside, but I think that the one nice thing, when you see them attacking those ATA numbers, one of the first times I've seen a government thing attack those numbers, not even attack them, but like do a study on it and say, hey, this isn't the full, it's great, because if you keep going by the same thing over and over again, you keep repeating that, and you keep going, oh, we have a driver shortage, they've been saying forever, like, what does that solve? But they also talk about how much money drivers will make yeah and and like you compare to other jobs where the that isn't necessarily true it's not a, right. it's not a great quality of life and there are jobs now in the market that pay more without having to sacrifice the lifestyle issues um, and I think we have to have an honest conversation why don't we have truck drivers to drive the trucks and haul the freight and those are conversations that need to be had and ultimately probably the biggest reason is that the truck driver population is getting older Yes. It's not a desirable workforce, sure. and there aren't younger people that want to drive, and we don't have programs that bring in folks that can drive. And so it is, it is a major issue, and it's one that we will have to deal with. Other countries have been dealing with this issue uh, for many years, and it's going to take government and politicians. And it's not – I mean, let's be honest. That's – I, I'm being too optimistic. It's not the best. <laughs> it's not the best solution for us, right there. I'm not. But they're going to have to get their act. Yeah, they, they yeah. are. And there's a disconnect. We've seen evidence of the disconnect when you look at the different the different surveys that, that have been done and what the what the companies say are the big issues and what the drivers say are the big there's issues. And through like, the yeah. they don't parking. even match. Now, up. here's one thing. I want to call out the Biden administration about this, and I want to call out Congress, and I want to call out the ATA and OIDA and everybody. Why in this infrastructure bill, the largest infrastructure bill in history, did you not address the truck parking problem? Like, that's absurd. That should have been addressed. That is a major, major problem. And hopefully, we'll get some movement there. So we'll give uh, a little bit of coal for the, the infrastructure. I was going to say, Dooner Claus is bringing coal to those guys. <laughs> well, Craig, thank, <laughs> Craig, thank you so much for, for, for joining us on here, uh, for coming on this holiday Amen. show, spending a little bit of time with us. We really, really appreciate it. And also, I just want to say to your family, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. And, and that, that picture of your kid in the hospital coming home, it really, I mean, that warmed our heart. It warmed Twitter's heart. Yes. It was, uh, it was, I, it's amazing. I, shout out to my wife. She's, yeah. She has been amazing on this journey. Uh, it's been a long journey, but it's over with, we yeah. think. And good, clean of bill health for both our twins. Amen. They are the happiest. <laughs> they, that picture is yeah. not unusual. That is, they are oblivious to anything. They certainly don't understand supply chain issues uh, that we face. <laughs> but more importantly, there are things that are more important, and they have yeah. just they have done well. So I really appreciate that dinner. Right on. You guys God have a great. Uh, you guys have a great season. You as well. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, we'll snow you off. Take, take it easy. A little more pleasure for you. This thing is wonderful. We got some more holiday messages. Let's play them. Happy holidays from Put That Coffee Down. Hey, hey, hey it's the holidays. Put that eggnog down. Yeah, put that eggnog down. Enjoy yeah. your friends and family. Have a great new year. Have a great holiday season. We'll see you in 2022. And most importantly, keep making that margin. That's right. Hey, Mattropolis, this is Matt Gaines, and I'm so excited to wish you happy holidays, you bunch of don't drink too much.
Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to all the folks out there in FreightWaves TV land who may have listened to me or any of the other great programming here on FreightWaves. Thank you guys so much for all of the attention that you give to the platform and to each of our shows. I can safely say that a lot of us put a lot of effort into it. So even the fact that you devote a little bit of attention to our programming, it is very, very, very appreciated. Uh, my name is Blythe Brumleave, and I just wanted to wish you all a Merry Christmas. So thanks. Happy New Year. Ready for Christmas? Yeah, Mom. All right. Daddy, I haven't seen Santa yet. Yeah, buddy, I think you'll be tonight with our presents at midnight. Hey, hun, are they yeah. on their way? Oh, let me check. Maybe ask them how close they are. Yeah, yeah, of course. Merry Cheers. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Cheers. 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 How many tickles <laughs> does it take to make an octopus laugh? Oh. Ten tickles. <laughs> <laughs> Can Tive track Santa's sleigh? Not really, but Tive can help track and avoid preventable shipment delays for Santa. Tive, because every holiday shipment matters. <laughs> It was a little presumptuous of Santa to take the entire tin, though. Like the entire tin, I would just be I like, I would be kind of, a, I would be like, really? I mean, I'm on the, the fence. If it was a plate and you took the plate, yeah. The oh. tin is, it's almost suggests it's a gift for you. You know, I, I don't know. Hey, our buddy John know. Brewer from Carl's Jr. Hardy CKE Restaurants, he wrote a song for us and uh, he gave us lyrics and he told us that we would have to sing it. So get us that backing track. <laughs> On the 12th day of Christmas, my supply chain came to me. 12 ships are loitering, 11 containers burning. We're not even with the music. Eight skews shorting, seven tenders rejected, six Zoom calls. I'm not feeling this music. Guys, there's ducks going on in the background. There's people screaming. I don't know if that there's lady was eating. Can you, can you play this for us? I can. Hold on All right, let's have let's you do it. Let's crank this baby up. Are we ready there, Fraser? Make this rock. All right, let's do it, man. A little punk. A little, a little jealous. All right, let's pick it up. You ready? Twelve day of Christmas, my supply chain gave to me. Twelve ships are loitering, liquidators burning, nine spot rates soaring, eight skews shorting, seven tenders rejected, six zoomers muted, five hurricanes, four raging wildfires, three booster shots, two Peloton bikes, and a shot on freight John Brewer wrote that one. Thank you, Johnny. All right. All right. All right. Let's find out who is naughty and nice because we got Sal Mercagliano here. He is the PhD chair, Department of History, Criminal Justice. This is longer than the 12 days of Christmas in political science at Campbell <laughs> University. Hello, sir. Guys, Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. I don't know how I follow that. How do you possibly follow that music? <laughs> I don't even I don't even know what to tell you by hitting mute. <laughs> the, the headphones were the mistake today they, they were the mistake today just so you know well sal this is uh we have a couple pictures of you here because we're going to talk about naughty or nice let's see the let's see the sewer let's see this time magazine cover person of the year all right talk to us sal who's been naughty this year uh, uh you know number one on my list the naughty list has got to be ever given i mean she just went aground in that sewer as created the myriad of problems that we're seeing today and she's a good kind of just image of all the problems, all the all the hurdles we keep hitting time and time again, whether it's a port closing, whether it's ever given, you name it, it's the newest hurdles we we see happening all the time. Now I got a couple more on my naughty list. I got a couple more I'd add in there. Uh, all right, is it your red the, tree? Let's go down the list. Let's go down the list. No, it's not my red. That's the one. It's an orange tree. It's <laughs> okay. orange and black. That's the that's that's the color of the camels right there. That's that's what you want. That's the great tree right there. But no, I even moved it into the background for you guys today. So I, I have it, it here for you. 
But I would add a minority minority okay. list. I got to put the PMSA, the PMA, the, the Marine Exchange, and the administration at LA and Long Beach for being the absolute Grinch and sending the ships out to sea. Yeah. I mean, just that is the <sighs> the naughtiest thing I can think that you can do is by pushing the ships out to sea and sending all those mariners out of the sight of land. You know what I mean, really, a vessel. Run- so what really angered me about that, too, yeah. was that it was so obvious what the port was doing. And then the, to have them stand out there and go, by our KPIs, it looks better. Well, you just gained yeah, the KPIs yeah, yeah. to make it look that way at the expense yeah, of seafarers and at the expense of true, transparent information. Yep. There, there, there is one ship that's sitting out there that shows an ETA into L.A. of January 2nd. That it left uh, Busan, Korea on November 17th. That is 47 days at sea. That is longer at sea than Columbus took to cross the Atlantic. Wow. Uh, I mean, it's shorter to go to New York now from China, right? Well, Only 33 it, days, I think, it is. is what it is. Hey, Sal, yeah. I saw you on uh, Santa Claus's lap over here. I, I don't know if he needed a knee replacement <laughs> after that, but uh, who, who is good? You, you got a good one? I do. I, I, I have a couple on my, on my, on my uh, really on my, uh, on my nice list. Uh, I would add, first off, the digger in the Suez Canal. I think oh, yeah. that's a great one to add in there. I think no one probably captured the supply chain better than the image of the digger trying to get the ever given free. But I, I got to say my, my, my top two are, number one, just the attention the supply chain has gotten. I have students asking me, how do I major in supply chain? Yeah. How do I get into supply chain? Which I think one of the things that this has done is really elevated it up. And then really the top nice on my list has got to be the seafarers. It's got to be the longshoremen. It's got to be the workers who have kept this going, not just this year, but even into last year. And they've, you know, oh. nonstop, God bless them all. They've been able to do this and keep everything moving. You know, 1.5 million seafarers keep the world's freights moving on the ocean. Sal, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your naughty and nice list. We really appreciate you, and I know that we'll be seeing you in the new year. Take it easy, brother. I appreciate the invite, guys, and happy holidays to everybody in the Freight Waves Nation. Right on. Peace and love, Sal. I think we have one more group of cheer. One more group of cheer before we go. Oh, really? Happy holidays, and have a very Merry Christmas and a safe New Year's from everybody here at Freight Waves Now. We hope everybody out there has a truckload of fun. Thanks for joining us this past year on Freight Waves Now. It's great to have you guys as our audience. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt McClellan, the host of Rising Tides here at Freight Waves TV. Just want to take a minute to say thanks for watching not just my show, but all the other shows on the network. Um, We're in the holiday season and just wanted to make sure that everybody remembers to spend some time with family, take some time off, enjoy what's going on. But don't forget to do your job because there's a lot of you in the supply chain that we are depending on to show up every day. Uh, We have a lot of shows, a lot of guests, a lot of ideas, a lot of topics to go over next year. I know that I've got some things I'm pretty excited about with on my show, uh, but I know the guys on What the Truck and some of the other shows have got some great content lined up for everyone. So again, just have a great holiday season. Enjoy some time with your family. Hope you can get out there and travel a little bit. And um, thanks again for tuning in to Freight Waves. Hey everyone, hopefully you have a safe and happy holiday and making logical, sound statistically driven decisions. And hopefully those gift cards are keeping up with the rate of inflation. Happy holidays from Freightonomics. Drink more water, and we'll see you in the new year. Drink more Uh, water. I love it. I love it, man. Some great, amazing stuff from all of our team. Hey, man. Thank you for a wonderful year on this. It was our best year of growth ever in our best month of growth ever with podcasting and with What the Truck. We hope to see you next year. We will be back January 5th, right? We'll be back Wednesday. That's right. We're on holiday that Monday, so we'll be back Wednesday, back to our regularly scheduled programs. And like Craig said, we'll be live. Coming up next year. Take it easy. Tell them what to say. Tell hey, them what to say. peace and love spread it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>